Monica, Alan, hello, Hi. Dad. Scotty, hey, this isn't a public hearing. Father-son lawyers, how quaint. I'm not here to watch the show. I'm here to get Joe Scanlon to let me represent him because there's going to be a hell of a fee involved when we sue the hospital for millions of dollars. I'm hungry. Is it almost done? I'm on my way. No crust, right? Right, and make it into triangles. Okay. to have this, but I have to do it. Who are you? What do you want? I'm the one who's got your back. My, my back? Sure. I scratch yours, you scratch mine, a little girl goes home. But your ransom note was pretty clear. Clear to who? Hmm? The FBI? Oh, I'm sure it sent them running to all those ransom note experts and all that other bureaucratic cop nonsense. <laughs> They'll never find me. But you did. That's because you called. Yes, indeedy, I did. See, you, you, me, and Baldwin, we all think alike. We understand the stakes. There are different rules for people like us. I am nothing like you. <laughs> oh, you have had your moments, darling. So, so is that it? We, we know each other, huh? Nice try. But you are only going to know what I want you to know. Look, all I need to know is, is where Serena is and how I can get her back. <laughs> In time. See, you are in no position to make demands. I need you to do a few things for me first. How do I know she's safe? How do I know you haven't done some things? <laughs> From here on out, Miss Lucy, you are going to have to listen very hard. Because all you have is my word. <laughs> we do have ever so much to discuss, but first, the big picture. Would that include you behind bars for the rest of your... Quiet, quiet, Miss Lucy. Now, you wouldn't want me to forget anything, now, would you? Like, like where I have Serena? No. All right, all right. Good, good. Uh, now, you know, in a situation like this, the drop is always the problem for a, for a person in my position. A kidnapper. <laughs> Miss Lucy, uh, the drop uh, will be this Friday. But your note... You forget about the note, uh, Miss Lucy. Just forget about the note. At the nurse's ball Friday night, you will pay me my money. Is that clear? The nurse's ball, but, but everybody will be watching. Oh, yes, of course, yes, of course. Hey, every eye in the house will be on beautiful you. Okay. What do you want me to do? Well, now, how the drop is done will be up to you and Mr. Baldwin. Us? What are you talking well, about? I do realize that. That is a little unusual, but it is what uh, I want. I don't understand how we're supposed to figure it out. How do we get it to you? Oh, please, 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 don't be so modest. Two very clever people such as yourselves. Machiavellian types used to manipulating people to get whatever it is you want. I'm sure you'll come up with something. And the beauty of it is, for Serena's sake, I do believe you will come up with something very interesting. And no one, no one will know but us. 
I, I haven't done anything like this before. Well, then, here's a clue. You find the best way to drop that money without notifying the authorities, or that girl is mine. If that money is not where you say it's going to be, the girl's mine. And if anyone else finds out about what's going on here, that girl is mine. What would you do to her? Well, now, I, I do believe it's in your best interest to come up with a plan and not worry yourself about that. Okay. Okay, fine. But I'm going to need proof. I'm going to need proof she's okay. Or we have no deal. You'll have to take your chances with the FBI. <laughs> my, 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 a threat? <laughs> All righty. A single concession. You will have proof tomorrow. In the meantime, you just act natural, both of you. Don't tell anyone else. Not even that shrink fiancé of yours. <laughs> oh, oh, I know. Engaged lovebirds. That's a mighty pretty ring he gave you. <gasps> I have it on good authority. That Dr. Collins sold a rather tasteful piece of art to pay for that. No one did. No. No, no one. No. <laughs> I know all about you, Miss Lucy. I watch your every move. I even know what you think. <gasps> Oh, Mama, it's time for me to go. <gasps> Don't turn around. Hmm? And you remember, I don't care what I have to do to that pretty little girl. Long bridges falling down, falling down. Falling down on the bridges, falling down, my fair lady. Take the keys and lock her up, lock her up, lock her up. Take... <gasps> <sighs> Mothers from miles around worried about Zuckerman's swing. They feared some child would fall off, but no child ever did. Children almost always hang on to things tighter than their parents think they will. That's enough for now. Charlotte's Wolf's my favorite. He always reads it to me. Oh. It used to be my favorite, too. When When's I... my daddy coming? It won't be long. Do you need anything? No. I have a lot of color to do before daddy gets here. Do you think he'll like this? I think he'll like it very much. <laughs> if you need anything else, just ask. Your daddy will be here real soon. Promise. I promise, sweetheart. Do this. Please, Rex, make this be over soon. Scott, this is an internal affair. The General Hospital is very capable of handling. Yes, in your own kamikaze fashion, no doubt. To the public, most doctors spend too much time in the courtroom and not enough time with their patients. So do yourselves a favor and keep it in the house. Now, I just want a couple of minutes of your time. Dr. Scanlon, this is unprecedented, but if you agree, go right ahead. Everybody take a seat, please. Any of you ever been in combat? The point being? The point being that most doctors in combat function different than doctors at city hospitals. Anyone that was ever a medic in Vietnam will tell you that. In Nam, doctors have to make decisions based on whatever information is available to them at the time to save lives. What the medical profession learned from that war has changed what goes on in emergency rooms today. The whole process is based on making decisions quick. Now, I have to ask myself, 
the night in question, what was going on with these people? What was Joe thinking? You got one guy shot dead. You got a psychopath waving a gun at everybody. And he knows at any moment he's going to pull that trigger again. I think we know the situation, Scott. How could you know? This is war. That doesn't excuse. You're a doctor. You took an oath to save lives before you think about your own. But you're not in a secure hospital. You got bullets flying all over the place there. You know, there's no procedures. There's no structure. There's no insurance. What are you going to do? Forget about Mrs. Hardy? She's laying there bleeding. Just prop her up and hope for the best. Cover yourself. That's not what these guys did. They saved a life from their med school experience and their judgment. Joe didn't know if he was going to live or not. All he wanted to do was save Mrs. Hardy, and he did that.